evening. Good evening. I'm going to do it again. Good evening. Good evening. You know, I've had this dry mouth since I've had this surgery, and I noticed I sent my bottle of water down here right beside this anointing oil. And uh, I just figured if I grab this one, y'all might be here four hours tonight. <laughs> so, so if you see me pull this one up, take a drink. Somebody say, whoa, whoa. You'll never get out of here tonight. It's good to see all of you in the service. And... Uh, Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. And he, he's all the time good. Amen. And you know, uh, sometimes Sunday nights are hard to make. Wednesday nights are hard to make. But I'm telling you, he's worthy of worship every Amen. single day. Amen. And uh, tonight we've come to worship him one more time. And, and we're starting this week. Our kids are going back to school. Or you're headed into work or, or whatever you do. And I'm telling you, there's no better way to start your week than giving praise and honor and glory to the Lord. Let's give him praise in his house together tonight. And uh, we're going we're gonna to enjoy the presence of the Lord this evening. Let me remind you, now next Sunday, Brother Derek will be preaching. I'll be in East Tennessee uh, preaching a homecoming. And I can't think of any greater, uh, any greater punishment for a man that's just had stomach surgery than going to preach a homecoming, can you? And uh, so I guess I'll just stand there and wave at all the food. But uh, Brother Derek will be preaching on Sunday and Sunday night. And then the next Sunday, August the 14th, is Friend and Family Day. Now, last year's Friend and Family Day, we had inflatables. You remember we had the fire truck come out, and we had uh, a pizza party over here. And it's, it's a wonderful time. School's back in session. And it's just a great time for everybody to get back in the swing of things. And thank God fall is coming. Somebody, well, some of y'all don't care about that, but some of these guys that work outside are glad fall's on its way. And uh, then there'll be snow and Christmas trees, and then I'll be right back in hog heaven. All right? So who's moaning and groaning? Boy, I tell you. Bless y'all's hearts, dear sister. What? It'll be too cold. Well, you know. Some of them are freezing today. That, yeah. hey, Look at Sister Beth. You think it's too cold now, or you think? You know? Beverly's got problems, so I don't. <laughs> so, anyways, what are you covering up for? You know what they told me, Beverly? The older you get, the thinner your blood gets. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you, dear sisters. You can put stuff on. I can't take nothing off. So you're going to have to deal with it. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> All right, let's stand to our feet. And uh, uh, I'm going to get in trouble again. <laughs> It is the anesthesia talking, by the way. <laughs> Sister Lori, play us a number. I'm going to go try to shake some hands and make friends with people tonight. All right? Let's shake hands
right, now that we're all friends again, just remain standing. Brother Phillip's going to come lead us in worship tonight. Told me he's gonna turn service on me. I told him, yeah. After you done muddied up the water, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what us deacons are good for. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you said that, brother. I did. <laughs> All right, everyone, get them a hymn. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Good to laugh a little bit, and. Uh, I think the Lord looks down sometimes and kind of giggles at us sometimes. I know he does at me, but uh, uh, it's good to be here. Good to see each and everyone. Get you a hymn. We'll turn over to page 53. This is, a, uh, we all have our favorite songs. This is just a, I, I love the old song. It's just, to me, a worship song. You know, we, we come to church to worship the Lord. We have a little fun. And we do that, and that's okay. But our main reason here is to Amen. give him praise. Amen. And, uh, he, he deserves all we can give him, and then some. We can't praise him enough. So, page 53, we have come into his house. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. If you would just remain standing just briefly, turn in the Word of God to the book of Romans tonight, chapter number five. If you've got victory, shout amen, amen. tonight. Amen. Oh, I love that song. Love amen. the Spirit of the Lord in this place tonight. And appreciate all of you being back on a Sunday night. And uh, we miss our regulars. Those that are sick can't be here tonight. But I'm glad the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. Amen. How many of you felt the Lord in this place? Can I see your hand? Uh, I'm telling you tonight, I believe the Lord meets with his people. And what a blessing it is. Romans chapter 5. This evening we're going to consider not only a hope that is living, but tonight a love that is lasting. This morning we talked about hope that is living. How many of you say, Preacher, my hope is in the Lord? Amen. Tonight I want to tell you also in the Lord you can find a love that is lasting. Now I want to tell you something. It takes a special individual to love people like us. Hello. Amen. It takes a special person to love people like us. And I want to tell you who that person is. His name is Jesus. Amen. How many of you love him tonight? Amen. How many of you are glad he loves you? Amen. Over in Romans chapter 5, verse uh, number 1, uh, I wanted to read these that verse together with uh, the other verses. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Aren't you glad you're not under the law? I mean, let's talk about that for a minute. Aren't you glad that God didn't just give you a list of things you had to do to try to get into heaven? You know how many rules God gave Adam and Eve in heaven? One. You know how many rules they broke? One. <laughs> do you know you'll never be good enough to get into heaven? You couldn't keep all the rules to get into heaven, but aren't you glad tonight you are saved Amen. by the grace Amen. of God? Yeah. I'm glad I can Amen. say my name's written Amen. over there. Amen. We're standing in grace tonight. Yeah. We're justified by faith, and here we are in this mm -hmm. grace that we stand. If you're still with me, say amen. 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 Now look with me in verse number 3. And not only so, but with glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation, now here it is, worketh patience. How many of you still need patience? Ah. Uh, now, <laughs> and patience experience, and experience hope. Verse number five. Let's read it out loud together. Are you ready? And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Father, would you bless your people tonight? We've come to hear from heaven through the word of God. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name and amen. You know, tonight as you're being seated, I want to talk about a love that lasts. The Bible has much to say tonight about the love of God. The Bible tells us that God's love is divine. The Bible says God is love. Say that with me. God is love. The Bible tells us that the Bible tells us that his love is giving. For it says God so loved the world that he gave. We can find God's love is decisive in its assurance. It says as my father hath loved you. So uh, as my father hath loved me so have I loved you. We can see it's durable. The Bible says I have loved thee with an everlasting love. There is nothing on this earth that can remotely compare to the love of God. Amen. Listen to this closely. Someone said this about God's love. The love of God is the most astounding fact of all of history. It is an ocean whose depths have never been sounded, a sky of unknown dimensions, a mine of wealth whose riches can never be estimated or exhausted, a pole of attraction which no explorer has ever gazed upon, and a forest of beauty which no botanist can classify. The love of God was present in creation, active in redemption, and for all of eternity the love of God will be there thank God I love him but even more than that thank God he loves me and God loves 
you say amen right amen. there. Amen. Today we have a society that doesn't know about love like they used to know. In fact, tonight our society knows more about lust than it does, does love. Lust is seemingly everywhere. And I'm afraid we're raising a generation that is confused about the difference between lust and and love. Lust is of the devil. Love is of God. Lust pleases itself, but love seeks out the good pleasure of others. We are not saved by lust. We are not kept by lust. We are not blessed by lust. We are saved by the love of God and a God that looked down upon you and me and said, I love them and I want them in my family. Is anybody glad for the love of God this evening? I want to say our society is eat up with lust. But there is a great difference in lust and love. When you're talking about lust tonight, the Bible has much to say about it as well. Lust is focused on pleasing self. It often leads to unwholesome actions that fulfill one's desires with no regards to the consequences. Lust is about possession and greed. And I'm telling you tonight, beloved, this country is eat up with lust tonight. But what we need is to stand up and say there's something better Amen. than lust. There's the love of God that's greater Amen. than anything in the world. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we're living in a society, and I'm going to camp out right here for a minute, that focuses on itself. How many of you have ever known anybody that was self-focused? Anybody? I focused on their self and listen to me they're only interested in fulfilling one's desires yes Lord I hear you and I'll say that there's a lot of churches tonight that are only focused on their selves and focused on what they want and how they want it and getting things their way but I want to tell you tonight my name might be on the sign but I don't own this church let me tell you whose church this is tonight this church belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Is anybody with me tonight? I feel preaching coming on this evening. I'm going to tell you when we're out to satisfy self and do only what we want to do, we've lost track of who we are. I belong to the Lord tonight. You belong to the Lord. How many of you believe we ought to be more interested in doing what God wants than doing what we want? Is anybody alive in the house tonight but there is a God of lasting love aren't you glad tonight God's love's not a temporary love God's love's not just a, sacri a love that's uh, uh, superficial but his love is eternal uh, and his love is supernatural one time I read a little article about a group of children who were asked what love means Rebecca, who was eight years old, said, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather paints them for her. That's love, she said. Don't worry, some of you ladies, your men aren't interested in painting your toenails. <laughs> Billy was four years old. And they said, Billy, what is love? Billy said, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is just different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. That's a four-year-old. Bobby was seven. He said, love is what's in the room at Christmas if you stop opening your presents and listen for a while. Tommy was six said, love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends even after they get to know each other. <laughs> Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> Nikki, who's six, said, if you want to learn to love, you should start with somebody you hate. Think about that. 
And Cindy said during my piano recital, I was on stage and I was scared and I looked at all the people watching me and I saw my daddy waving and smiling and he was the only one doing that and I wasn't scared anymore. That's love. Well, I want to tell you something. That's love through the eyes of a child. But love through the eyes of saved Christian individuals and the Word of God knows that love is that and much more. Love is a God that saw you headed for hell. Love is a God that saw your life headed down the drain and he said, Woo! I love them so much that I'm going to send my son and redeem them. Is anybody glad for the love of God? Give him praise in his house. There's a love that lasts tonight and it's the love of God. Love that lasts. Say that with me. Love that lasts. Where does that love come from? Well, it comes from God. I want to say a few things tonight about this love. When it comes to the subject of God's love, many of us are a little fuzzy about it. You know, a lot of people are confused about God's love because He doesn't love the way we do. We love others because of what they do for us. He loves us because it's his nature to love. And when you know the love of God, I think it's the most amazing thing. When we were little, we learned a little tune as children. You know it probably. It says, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Keep on. They are weak. Now here we go. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. But here's something I want to tell you. You can sing that song. And you can talk about the love of God. But until you got down upon your knees and experienced salvation, you will never understand what it was like to know that you were the lowest of the low and the sorriest of the sorry and the wretchedest of the wretched. Is there anybody that knows what it's like to feel like you hit rock bottom? Is there anybody knows what it's like to feel like you'd hit the end of your rope, strung out, messed up, tore up from the floor up, your life in shambles, but you finally got through to God and now you know better than anybody what it is to be loved by God. Is there anybody in this house that knows what it's like to be saved, to be washed in the blood, to have your name written down in heaven? Aren't you glad you know the love of God tonight? You see, many people are fuzzy on the love of God. But this is a love that lasts and it's a hope that lives tonight. If you're still with me, say amen. Amen. I wanted to say to you tonight, maybe you're watching on Facebook or maybe you're here in the church and you struggle with this question, does God love me? Does God love me? You know, all of us are not always lovable. (coughs) Some days you're as prickly as a cactus. Some days you're as salty as Taco Bell. Some days your attitude's plum pitiful. I'm going to keep on until I hit every one of you. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't sure how far I've got yet. Sometimes your mood stinks. Ever been in a bad mood? Some of you in it tonight, and it ain't my fault. <laughs> you come in here that way, you go out that way, and I just want to tell you, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> One time a guy come up to a preacher before he took the pulpit, and he'd just finished singing, he turned around, and this is a true story. A preacher friend of mine, he looked at him and said, Preacher, half the congregation's asleep. And the preacher said, Well, you're the one that's been up, not me. <laughs> 
You come in here in a bad mood, that's your problem. It ain't my fault. But sometimes we have a bad day. Say amen. How many of you have ever had times where you're in a foul mood? Can I ask you, have you ever just been in a place where you want to be left alone? But can I tell you something? God loved you even then. <laughs> how many of you how many of you'd be honest and say people probably shouldn't bother me before I've had coffee? <laughs> Miss Hattie, God even loves you before you have a cup of coffee. <laughs> How many of you say, Preacher, sometimes I'm unbearable? Yeah. You ever looked in the mirror and realized the biggest problem with your Christianity is staring right back at you? Yeah. Oh, you didn't want to hear that tonight, but can I tell you we blame churches, yeah. preachers, and deacons, but it's always ourselves that stand between us and the Lord. But I want to tell you, on your lowest day, if you could find a day in your life, and I've got one, that was the worst day of your life, the lowest day. Have you ever been lower than a snake's belly? I'm telling you, on the lowest day of your life, you might have been drunk, you might have been drugged up, you might have made a, a life-changing decision that went wrong, but can I tell you, on your very worst day, in your darkest night, in your bleakest hour, the God of heaven still loves you and still cares about you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Does Jesus love you? Yes, he does. How do I know? Because the Bible tells me so. How do I know? Because I feel it in my heart. If God did not love you, he would not have sent his son for you. But oh, the grace that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the love that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Don't let circumstances or Satan tell you God don't love you because God loves you. There's no one God doesn't love. East and west, north and south. Man may go to hell unsaved, but he won't go unloved. God Amen. loves yeah. all of Amen. us tonight. Amen. By the way, the church will never be what it ought to be until we start loving the people God loves. The church will never be what it ought to be until we love the people God loves. You know the people that most churches don't want? That's the people God wants. You know the people that most churches would turn up their nose at? That's the people God sent his son for. You know the people that they talk about down on uh, Main Street? You know the people they talk about downtown? You know the people they talk about at the gas pumps? You know the people they gossip about down at the church? Well, I want to tell you, those are the people God loves. And God wants to save them just like he saved you. God loves them. And I'm glad he does, John, because I was one of them. Amen. This evening, I'm going to give you five unusual things about God's love, and I'm going to do it quick. Number one, God's love is an uninfluenced love. God's love is an uninfluenced love. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 19, we love him because he first loved us. Uninfluenced. What am I saying? You know, I hate to tell you all this. There's people that don't like you. Does that shock any of y'all? In fact, there's people that just can't stand you. There's people that can't stand me easily. I can name a bunch of them. Can't stand me. But what they think didn't die on the cross for me. There's people who don't like you. And there's people, now, I want everybody to reach up here and hold on to this for a minute. Better get a good hold on it for what I'm about to tell you. There's people that talk about you. Are y'all still alive? 
There's people that talk about you. But there's nothing they can say to make God love you less. <laughs> Boy, that's worth praising God over it. You can't influence God when it comes to love. I can say, Lord, Brandon Burgess, uh, I don't like his cologne. I don't like his shoes. I don't like his Under Armour parachute tag right here he's got hanging out of his pants. I don't like it. Y'all know I love this man. Uh, we put up with each other our whole lives. But anything I can say about this man negative to God, God ain't listening. He loves that man. What a God. He is not influenceable about love. Hey, down through the years, folks, down through the years, I've preached a lot harder than this. Y'all are getting middle-aged, Brother Andy. But young Brother Andy could jump up on pews, jump off stages, run down aisles, and people would talk. And they'd say, well, he's fake. He's a phony. Can't be that excited. Well, if you'd been in the hell God dug me out of, you'd be excited about it. I don't know what to tell you. If you'd been in the mess I was in before the Holy Ghost found me and saved my soul, I don't know how anybody can contain their excitement. If I don't do something, I'll blow up and Marty will have to clean it up. <laughs> but people talk and talk and talk. Do you know what, Brother Philip? Everything they said never changed one bit of how much God loved me. How many of you are glad God loves you? How many of you are glad the rumors and the gossip don't matter to God? He still loves you. I say, woo! Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, y'all still with me? Aren't you glad rumors don't spread in heaven? (laughs) Hello. Number two, write this down. His love is an underrated love. We really don't know how valuable it is to be loved by God. Everything, now listen to me, every good thing you've got in your life is because God loves you. How many of you have children? Raise your hand. Well, raise them up. You act like they're in here counting for child support or something. Some of you trying to get you Tennessee EBT. You raising all them. <laughs> Here's what the it's Anastasia Beverly. Here's what the Bible says. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abide in faith, hope, and charity, which is love. These three, but which of those three is the greatest? Love. love. The greatest of these is charity. That's why I married her. The greatest of these is charity. Did you know tonight the reason you're blessed like you are is because God loves you. Can you imagine that God of heaven, a holy, righteous God who created this world, takes the time to care about people like us, and yet I'm telling you tonight, get it in your heart, God loves me. Say it. God loves me. Say it again. God loves me. Friend, I'm telling you, it's underappreciated. It's underrated. But everything from the clothes on your back to the shoes on your feet to the food on your table to the salvation in your soul to the blood that washed you clean to the Holy Ghost that lives in you to the Bible in your hands to the children in your pews is because because the great God of heaven looked down and said, I love them. Amen. Number three, the love of God is unfailing love. Unfailing love. When the love of God gets in somebody's life, it never fails to change them. How many of you have been changed by the love of God? Is anybody not ashamed to say, Preacher, I've been changed? One of the most astonishing examples of unfailing love in the Bible is in the book of Hosea. Some of y'all 
that are having babies, if you need a good baby name, let me suggest Gomer. Wouldn't that be a good name? Nathan likes it. <laughs> Gomer. Everybody say Gomer. Gomer. Don't that sound nice, Kelly? Be a good name. Gomer Merriman. That's a criminal. That's better than Powell. <laughs> If you're not familiar with the book of Hosea, God commands the prophet to marry a woman named Gomer who is likely a prostitute. Would prove to be an unfaithful wife. Gomer's infidelity paints a picture for us, Brandon, of Israel's disloyalty to the Lord. And by the way, prostitution is a picture sometimes of what the bride of Christ does. We're only supposed to have one man in our lives, and his name is Jesus. And there's too many Christians bed hopping to other churches, other religions, other things. When we belong to Jesus, now say amen to that. Amen. But this was a picture of Israel and their disloyalty. God uses the marriage illustration to teach us about his righteous anger in Hosea regarding Israel's sin of spiritual adultery. Listen to this. Hosea's relentless love and faithfulness to his wife are a stunning portrait of a God that will chase you down and pursue you until he gets you. And when he gets you, he will pay the price for you so that you can get out of the mess you are in and get over into the bride of Christ. And I am so glad tonight. Oh my, am I ever glad that he chased me down. I'm glad he sought me out when nobody would come looking for me. Jesus came looking for me. And he came looking for you. How many of you are glad he found you? The story of Hosea and Gomer is an amazing story, Glenn. Because at one point, Gomer is on her own and probably living as a slave. But Hosea buys her back with 15 shekels of silver and some barley. What a picture, Brother Philip, of the God of heaven who sent his best and bought us back out of the slavery of sin. His love is an unfailing love. His love is an underrated love. His love is an uninfluenced love. Somebody give him praise for his love that never ends. It lasts forever. Last forever. Let me give you two more things. We go home. It's an undivided love. Can I get you as a church to turn to Romans 2 and 11? I want to I want to drill this home before we go home. Folks, you ever have to do this with your Bibles? I don't know what's going on. Any of y'all ever had to do this? Any of you ever had to do this? <laughs> Verse 11. Read it out loud. For there is no respect of persons with God. You hear that? For there is no respect of persons with God. I want to tell you something amazing about the love of God. God loves Schultz as much as he loves Andy. Now you parents know how important it is to lie to your children and tell them you don't have a favorite. <laughs> now as for, no. as for me, I have two favorites. Girls are different, son. I don't want to tell you. Somebody say amen. They both amen at you, dog. <laughs> you see where the pecking order is. You've always known. He's always known. <laughs> hey, isn't it funny? 
Ain't it funny what happens now? A lot of y'all about to have a second kid. Isn't it funny what happens? The first kid, you take a thousand pictures a day. <laughs> and that second kid, you can't even find a picture of him. <laughs> Ain't that funny? That first kid drops that pacifier and you boil that thing in water. Second one drops it in the toilet and you take it out, wipe it on your shirt, and stick it back in. Are y'all alive in this place? What's the deal? Man, these second kids ain't getting... You have it rough. Am I telling the truth or am I telling the truth? God is no respecter of person. There is no way that God loves me any more than he loves Carlin. He loves us the same. And you would say, yeah, but you've been preaching 26 years and I just, I just got saved. With God, he's no respecter of persons. Isn't that awesome? To me, it's amazing because sometimes, and the reason I wanted to talk about this just for a minute, and I'm basically done, but I think sometimes I want you kids to listen to this. There are no spiritual supermen and superwomen. Can I give y'all a deep revelation? Facebook's a liar. Amen. Amen. You know what? Now look at this. Look right here. See this? There's a there's a app I can get on Facebook and put on there, and I can go. Whoa. <laughs> look like a pear. <laughs> Small top, big old high knee. You almost laughed, and if I ever get you to laugh, I'll quit and go home. <laughs> you cannot trust everything you read on Facebook because most, now there's, there's two classes of people on Facebook. There's the belly acres that want sympathy. Yeah, if y'all ain't found that out yet, you will. But then there's other people who only show you the best things that happen. Now, I can get on there and post this picture of me like this, and you won't understand. I tried on four ties and three shirts and kicked my shoes across the floor and did everything trying to find what I wanted to wear. But you'd say, boy, what a nice outfit. <laughs> Most people, before they take a picture of their home, clean it up. They don't ever take a picture of their home when it ain't clean. But I'm a preacher who's knocked on a thousand doors, and I've seen everything you could ever see. <laughs> Don't trust Facebook. There are no spiritual supermen or superwomen. We're all in the same boat tonight. Every one of us are sinners saved by grace that have problems and trials and troubles. And I'm going to tell you, any church I pastor, we're not going to paint a picture of perfection. We're not going to be unattainable. We're going to be people that others can look at and say they're real, they're genuine, and if they can serve God, I can serve God. Because the love of God has no favorites. Yeah. I want you to stand with me tonight. And we're going to pray right where you are. The final thing is the love of God is so amazing. I think I've killed this microphone stand. Turn that one on. It's unimaginable. See if you can quote this with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's almost unimaginable. Now look. Now look. You know you. I'm not talking about the church you, the Sunday you. You know you. You know you. The snappy, attitude <laughs> cantankerous, ornery you. You know you, don't you? You know how you are from time to time. God loves that you. God's not impressed with my tie tonight. <laughs> God doesn't look down and say, Oh, man. 
Now look at him. No. God sees the real me. And he sees the real you. But the amazing, unimaginable thing about it is that's the one God sent his son for. God loves me. Say it with me. God loves me. Say it again. God loves me. Don't ever let the devil tell you he don't. He loves you. Even when you mess up. That's not an excuse to sin or a license to sin. The reason you serve God is because you love God. And God loves you. And when we mess up, you go to Him. And you say, Lord, I'm sorry. And God loves you so much that He says, I forgive you. God loves you tonight. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I want to thank you for your love. It's a love that is eternal. A love without end. It's unimaginable to me that you could love somebody like me, but I'm convinced after all this time, Lord, I've seen too much, I've felt too much, I've been through too much. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt your love is real. It's undivided. Lord, it's, it's an amazing love. Lord, I pray your people would be able to walk out of this service tonight and say, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Lord, more than anything tonight, I want your people to go out and understand just how much you love them and how incredible it is in light of who we are to consider who you are and that you love us. God bless your children tonight. Thank you for the privilege to feed your people. God bless them tonight and throughout this week. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And amen. Let's praise him for his love tonight, would you? Well, my nose is cold. I don't know what happened. Anyway, you're not getting my throat. Hang it on your nose.